Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I wanna talk about some of the things that just scream toxic work environment and bad management for software developers. You know, at my first job, we had an amazing team of developers, but all the management that was above us and people that oversaw our team didn't really care about quality of code. They didn't care about process that the developers had in place. All they cared about was us shipping out new features and getting stuff done as fast as possible. They treated us like code monkeys. And while it was a great learning experience for me, it was also very draining and it helped me out a lot to know what I don't want in a job the next time I go looking for one. So that's why I'm making this video to maybe try to help some of you who might be looking for jobs or who might be wondering if they're just at a bad job right now and need to get out. Here's gonna be a few things that just scream, get the hell out while you can. So first, let's start off with the obvious, non-technical management. So apart from the developers that you work with, if you have management that oversees your team or dictates what your team works on and they don't have any technical background, they were never software developers, they were never project managers, they were never scrum masters, they don't understand the process of building software, this is one big red flag that you can look for actually when you're interviewing and you're meeting some of the upper management during your interview process. Many of the times you don't get to that step until you're towards the end of your interview process. But if you start meeting managers while you're interviewing that have no technical background that oversee the team that you'll be working on, this is probably one of the red flags that you should kind of look out for a little bit. Of course, there's some considerations here because if these managers just kind of sign off on stuff and your development supervisor or your technical lead has more say on how the process goes, then you may not have to consider this because not always is upper management gonna come from a programming background or a technical background. But if you realize that every manager that you're meeting with has never written any code and doesn't come from uh, you know, any kind of programming background, they've never been a scrum master, they've never been a project manager, they've never been a product owner, they've never written any code. These are kind of things that you should think about when you're interviewing and really consider that, do you wanna work on a team that doesn't have management that understands the process of software development? This can lead to a lot of other things that I'm gonna continue talking about in this video. But that's probably the first thing that you wanna kinda of keep an eye out for. If all the managers that oversee your team and your department have no idea what any of the developers actually do, that's probably a big red flag that you should look out for first and foremost. The next thing that you can ask for during an interview is kinda of ask how does the development process work? Is there code review? Do they value documentation? These are two two big things that will really kind of determine if you're on a good team or not. You know, if they don't do any code review, that's a major red flag. And that's even a red flag on the development team because if, if your development team doesn't even have enough say on having processes in place for, you know, how, how your code gets shipped out and, you know, how it gets reviewed and who signs off on it, if there's no code review and everyone's just free to push whatever they want to the code base, that's a major red flag that it might even just be a bad dev team. Again, this, this doesn't totally depend on the dev team either. This could go back to bad management. I, at my first job, they did not care about documentation or code review. Many of the times management would give us a hard time and tell us that we were holding up everyone and holding up releases because we wanted to make sure that there was documentation and we wanted to make sure that everything went through code review, you know, so we can catch things like bugs or bad code and just maintain good code quality. But the management, since they weren't technical and they never wrote any code, they didn't see the value in having good documentation or having code review process or anything of that nature. They were kind of just thinking that we were trying to hold everyone up because we just wanted to. Again, this goes back to the first thing I mentioned. If you have non-technical managers, things like this will be a lot more common. So don't be scared to ask during your interviews when you're talking to some of the developers, what are the processes? How do they value documentation? Is there code review? Is there, is there version control? These are all very important things. And if they say no to all of these, run as fast as you can and don't turn back even if you're really desperate for the job because the truth is you're gonna be there for at least a year or two before you can find your next job. 
And do you really want to start off your software development career working in a bad dev environment that doesn't care about documentation, doesn't care about code quality, and they basically just want you to ship out as much stuff as fast as possible? That's how it was in my first job. And you know, it's, it's not good. It, it leads to crappy code and it turns you into a code monkey. And if you don't care about the quality of your work, then why are you doing this? And when you stop caring about the quality of your code and the quality of your work, then you start losing your integrity. And if this happens, it's eventually going to lead to you burning out and wanting to quit anyways. So make sure that you look for this as one of the red flags when you're interviewing for a job or even if you're already at a job and you're realizing that these are things that, that management is starting to tell you that, hey, we don't want you focusing on this stuff. This stuff's not important to us. If it takes an extra day for you to document stuff or if it takes an extra day for stuff to go through code review and we don't want any of that stuff to happen because we want things to get shipped out as quickly and as fast as possible, it might be time for you to consider maybe looking for a new job at this point. Now, I talked about documentation a tiny bit when I was talking about code review, but documentation is really important again. And I, I know I covered it a tiny bit, but this is something that if the developers on the team don't value documentation and the management isn't really so uptight about you taking it a little bit longer, but your, your, your tech lead or your development manager or your, you know, the senior dev that oversees your team tells you to not worry about documentation, Oh, that's not good at all. That's that's a really bad sign. If it's management that's putting pressure on you to not write documentation, that's a little bit different because again, that's just a sign of bad management and not necessarily a sign of a bad development team. At my first job, this was the same exact problem that we had. Every time we added points to our sprint for documentation and code review and all these things, we would always just be told to not hold everything up. So think about that too. Another good thing that you can ask during an interview process is how are deadlines determined and who determines the deadlines? If the response is the developers, you know, consider how much work is going to be involved and how long it will take to complete. And that's what determines a deadline. That's a good sign. If you ask that question and the response is, well, you know, are the higher ups make that call or it's the manager that makes that call or it's the other team that makes that call. And it's not based on the volume of work and how much effort is going to go into, you know, releasing a feature or building something new. That's a big red flag right there all on its own. So if deadlines are just arbitrarily set by upper management without any consideration as to how much effort goes into building something, that's another red flag that it just screams like run for the hills, get out as fast as you can. Arbitrary deadlines are terrible because they will lead to death marches. And if you're not familiar with what a death march is, it's basically when someone tells you, I want this done. And the development team knows for a fact that it can in no way be delivered at that time, but they're still forced to try to make that deadline against everything that they said and against all of their opinions. They're forced to try to make a deadline that they never agreed to in the first place. And this happens quite a bit. It happened at my first job and it led to a lot of burnout and it led to people leaving and it led to a lot of miserable developers. And this kind of is a segue into the next thing. If you're getting some of these responses and you're starting to realize that the developers opinions don't matter that much. This is something that you should be very weary of when you're looking at a job or considering a job or if you're working at a job and you're starting to realize that no matter what your team says and no matter what the developers say, nobody is listening and upper management doesn't care what you have to say and they don't value your opinion. This is another major red flag. And if you're currently in, an, in a work environment that's like this, please, please, please start considering, you know, brushing up that resume and cleaning up that portfolio and start looking for a new job because it's not gonna get any better. If they already don't value you now, it's never gonna change. And again, another segue into the next thing that I kinda wanna talk about is promises, promises, promises. You know, at my first job, upper management made so many promises to us. They were watching developers drop like flies. They were watching all the talent leave. They were watching people burn out and they were seeing that everybody was unhappy yet they made a bunch of promises which they never fulfilled and they just dangled a carrot on a stick in front of us to keep us moving towards those deadlines that they had set and we never had any discussion about. So if you're getting told by management that all these things are going to change and time keeps passing by but nothing is changing and it just remains the same as it was a few months ago, 
really start considering that maybe you need to start looking for a new job because that's a big red flag as well. You know, they just keep giving you all these, these bull promises, but they never come through and you're just miserable and people are quitting left and right and your team is falling apart. And you went from a team of nine developers to a team of four developers and they can't hire anyone because nobody wants to work for this company. That's another segue. If you're having a hard time keeping good talent and you're having a hard time finding good talent to fill positions and roles on your dev team, this means that people are smart enough to not apply for this job. And word gets around. Before even stepping foot into an interview, you can know that a job is no good because you have these things like Glassdoor and Indeed that, that people go on and tell you how their experience was at that job. So make sure if you're applying for a job that you're checking these sites that will give you a heads up on what kind of work environment it is and what kind of culture this company has and if people are happy working there. Because again, people don't quit jobs, they quit bosses. And if you got bad management, it's inevitable that eventually most of the good qualified talent are gonna find better jobs and you're gonna kind of be left high and dry and eventually you're gonna leave as well because honestly eventually everyone else will quit too that's what happens if you have a bad toxic work environment and people are not happy they're gonna leave it's it's without a doubt that's what's gonna happen so, okay so I talked about this as well a little bit but if you're noticing that all your teammates are burning out, if you're noticing that everybody's miserable and unhappy, if you're noticing that you're unhappy and that you're miserable and that you don't wanna to go to work, this is a sign that you're probably burning out or that people around you are burning out. And this you know, kinda of all goes into what I was talking about before. If you're led on death marches, if you have bad management that doesn't care about your opinions and they don't care about the quality of your work and they basically just want you to be a code monkey and push out as much you know, code as you can and just get the job done and don't ask questions, you're gonna burn out. It's not gonna be good, you know? So really consider that. And one final thing that was really obvious at my first job that kind of took a while for us to realize was that they value agencies and consultants more than they value in-house developer opinions or the work that in-house developers contribute to projects. And they kind of just go to you for the everyday nuances and don't let you be part of building new things and be part of the overall big picture. And they just kind of want the in-house dev team to squash bugs and handle the day-to-day -day tasks while they go out and pay big agencies to build new products for you. And then your team is left to maintain stuff that other people built. And this really sucks and it really kind of will, will bring a good development team down. And this happened at my first job and I was very vocal about not being happy about this. I told my manager right to their face, I said, do you know this is bull that they get to build all this cool new stuff and then we have to sit back and document it and fix all the bugs that they put in place to make a deadline that we never agreed to? Needless to say, management didn't like me because I was very vocal about not being happy there. Eventually I left once I got enough experience and I was able to find another job that was the right fit for me for my next job, which is the current job that I'm working at now. I, I booked it, I, I bounced. I wasn't gonna stick around for any more of their crap. I was sick of working there. And all of this happened, this all snowballed from all these things that I was just mentioning to you. So please just consider these things when you're looking for a job or if you're currently at a job and you're noticing that it's just, it's just a toxic work environment and you're just not happy and a lot of the things that I talked about in this video are happening to you right now or if you're interviewing and some of these things are actually kind of popping up or becoming obvious that it's gonna be like this at the job you're interviewing for, please just wait it out, keep applying for other jobs, take your time, if you see that all these red flags are there, don't rush into that first job just because you're desperate to get hired. Trust me, you're gonna be there for at least a year or two. And after a few months, once the honeymoon phase is over and the reality of being in a shitty work environment sets in, you're gonna be miserable until you get enough experience and it's gonna feel like a jail sentence to you. Having to wait it out, crossing off, you know, every day off the calendar until you have enough experience to get that next job. So take your time, look for some of these red flags when you're applying for work. And if you're in a toxic work environment right now, please consider 
looking for another job, you're more valuable than you know, and you're worth more than you think you are, and the place that you're working at now sucks. You probably already knew all these things, maybe you needed to hear it from somebody else. You know, don't be scared to brush up that resume. Don't be scared to check that box on LinkedIn that says, let recruiters know I'm looking because it's always better to look for a job when you already have one than to just burn out and, you know, slam your keyboard down and kick your monitor over and say, this place, I'm out. I felt like doing that at times, but I had a family, I had a wife, I had kids and I couldn't just do that. So I played it smart. I. I waited it out and I found the right job and I left when I needed to leave. So please, if you're experiencing some of these feelings now at your current job, make sure you realize when it's time to go. With all that said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on learning how to code and becoming a self-taught programmer. Thanks and I'll see you next time.